sterility is very important. It also is protection of the eyes, very important. Patients always are worried about their vision, and we do extra steps to make sure they're protected by putting these little shields in. I'm Dr. Deer, a facial plastic surgeon in Beverly Hills. I want to show you my patients are real people who want natural results. One of the first places we start to see aging is in our eyes. While I can make temporary improvements with Botox, sometimes a surgical eye lift procedure called a blepharoplasty is necessary to get a great result. Today, I'm gonna to follow my patient, Seth, on his surgical journey. Today, I've uh, decided to get my eyes done. I just look tired all the time, and I find for the last probably two years, I just avoid pictures, and no matter what I do, I just always look and feel really fatigued and tired. My whole family, um, it's just our genes. Everybody has bags under their eyes and tired eyes, and somebody in my family actually got something done about it, and it made such a remarkable difference. I'm excited to finally make the decision to do something about it. Of course, you're always equal parts nervous and excited. I just look forward to not having bags under my eyes. I love the fact that Dr. Deer brings subtle results. Nothing that's too stark, nothing that's scary, nothing that I'm going to walk down the street and people are going to look at me as though I've had something done. And that's, to me, that was the tipping point with choosing Dr. Deer, is because his work is so subtle. Hey. Welcome. All right, yeah. bud. So here we go, you made it. You made it. All right, well, today's all about you. I want you to take away all those jitters and put it on me. We're gonna take good care of you. We've got okay. the anesthesiologist. Today it's all about you. All right. Uh, just to kind of go over our plan. I've been yes. staring at your pictures all night. I've done <laughs> the surgery like 17 <laughs> times in my head. Okay. So. <laughs> good. I've already done it enough, but all I right. make sure you and I are the same plan. Good. Okay. okay. So upper lid. Mm. You know, as we age. That's what bed, really bothers yeah, me. This makes you feel. You told me is <sighs> made you feel tired. It makes you look tired. Sorry. Yeah. And, um, it's not how you feel on the inside. So we are going to take this away, and okay. this will open up your eyelid, and you'll be able to see your upper lid. Wow. And so this will be good. We're going to take this conservatively, just take this skin that kind of whatever it gives me, and then we will see your upper lid, and that's going to be really good for you. I think. Okay. Yeah. More importantly, which is what you brought up, which is your lower lids are ex the number one thing you complained about when you first came in, mm. and we know you'd address that. You brought up that you have these pockets of fat that you feel are sticking out. Yes. And they get bigger and smaller throughout the day when you're tired or dehydrated. Yeah. Yeah. So we are going to do two things for this. Number one is we're going to take out those fat bags so that it gets a little tighter. Okay. And then also we're going to fill some volume of this hollowness. Rather than just take away the fat, it's actually better to use. It's a filler. It's a free filler. Okay. Why take away our free filler? Sure. And so we're going to take out these bags here. Rather than taking them away, I'm going to put them where they belong, which is down along the rim to try to give you some volume. Okay. okay? And we have a little bit of looseness of the skin and the lid is a little loose. I want to tighten your lid up a little bit, and that will help with the skin to actually tighten up. Okay. That will give you a youthful look. Next, we want to make sure we get a better jawline here. Mm. The proper way to do it would be a face and neck lift. However, he is desires that he wants to get into shape and actually do it at a time when he can give me more skin hanging down. And that's going to actually help me. I always tell patients, if you can lose a lot of weight sure. and make it sag, it actually helps me get a better result. Get a better result. Um, but to help that, we're going to have some fun today and we're actually going to contour his jawline and I'm going to do a little bit of liposuction. He doesn't have much, but if I can take out the fat here and some of the fat around the jawline, we hope that and plan that the skin will actually tighten and he will get a proper jawline and chin line that will be actually matching his youthful eyes and the rest of his face. This will give him those five to 10 years before we decide to do a face and neck lifting. He's gonna feel great. You're gonna to want to do more things active and you're gonna feel like a younger you. And lastly is, but you know, he's lived in Australia most of his life and then now he lives in California. So you've picked the hottest places on earth with sunrise. <laughs> sunrise. Um, and he's blessed with this beautiful skin that has been in the sun a long time. So we have a lot of discolorations here. So we just wanna make sure the tone and the color is a little bit more improved and we're gonna do that through a chemical peel. Do you have any questions about the procedure itself? No, I'm just excited to do it. Just get started. Okay. 
I'm excited to show you a surgery today, which is part of my facial rejuvenation procedure list. Face and neck lifts are truly the almost ultimate procedure to rejuvenate a face. His goals were to look a little bit more youthful, a little bit more young, and he's wanting to make a change in his life. He has raised a family, and it's time for him to think about himself. We're gonna do an upper lid blepharoplasty, which is a fancy term for just taking out that hanging skin on the upper lid. We're also gonna take care of his lower lids, a lower lid blepharoplasty, which is a little bit more complicated because we have to take out fat and also tighten the skin that's loose. Then we're gonna do a little liposuction under the neck and we hope that the skin will contour and heal up and give him a proper jawline. And then we're gonna deal with skin tone. It's always important to deal with skin tone with any patient I deal with, non-surgical or surgical, because skin tone really gives you a brightness and actually gets you to show off what we do to the face. So we're gonna do a chemical peel that'll take care of a lot of his brown spots, as well as give him a nice even tone to his skin with some baby skin, as you'll see as he heals over the next couple of weeks. Okay, we've marked our incisions. We are starting our case. We've injected local anesthesia and we're all ready to go. A little contacts now protect the eye for the case. This line is a crease that we all have on our eyelid. There are some cultures that don't have it and they like to get it made for them. But in general, you follow a natural crease of the upper eyelid. And that gives us the best scar because you get to hide it on a free area. It already has a crease. So the first part of the procedure for upper lids is take the skin only and it's very important to be on the plane that you want to be on so you don't damage certain structures of the eye and also decrease any chance of bleeding. So what you want to be is right on top of the muscle and just take skin only and we actually exactly have skin only and you can see that it's a beautiful plane, small bit of little bleeders but nothing too important, no arteries are bleeding and we want to make sure that our corners are well cut to make the best scar possible and I use the scissors right at the end. And there we go. And we'll keep this to show at the end that we took exactly the same amount of skin on both sides. So we're going to start to close the skin. We're going to close it with sutures that we can take out in the office. Obviously every facial plastic surgeon prides themselves on a good closure. He doesn't see what we do on the inside, but he's gonna see it on the outside. So we wanna make sure that we do it perfectly so that he's proud of the result that we give him. So we just close the upper lid. We use the same crease that we all have on our upper lid anyways. So this will heal very, very well. This is how it's gonna be closed. And he's able to close his eyelid. And now he doesn't have that hanging skin as you saw preoperatively. So we're gonna take fat from the lower lid. And the way to do that is actually to go from inside the eyes. So you actually get a better result because you have low risk of the skin pulling down on the eyelid. So if you go from the inside, it's actually a little bit different. You can actually see that it's a bloodless plane. I know it seems a little bit scary to watch. I get that, I recognize that. But the good news is this is actually a safer approach to get to the fat. So if we do it this way, you're actually able to sweep the muscle from underneath and you're not, and there's a fat. And you see it in the, such a clear plane and it's really, really healthy actually, a healthy approach as compared to coming a different way. fat pocket on the outside which is one of his major concerns and so by doing this I'm squeezing and I can see one two and three and those are the fat pockets that he's talking about so we're going to tease these out gently these can be a little bit dangerous in the sense that they bleed so you want to do it very slowly So 
So you see, when I pull down the fat here to the rim, you see that he's actually starting to get a little fullness here, where people say it's a tear trough deformity. If you look over here, to see how hollow it is here compared to this side? And so when I look here to here, and that's where I'm gonna pull the fat downward. And now you can see that he looks actually very rejuvenated compared to this end of the hollowness. We're gonna inject the neck while we start the other part of the lower lid surgery, but we're gonna get things set up for injections so we can start to fill the fat up with some fluid. So liposuction of the neck is very similar to other areas in the body, such as the stomach, the back, uh, the upper back, the thighs. So what we do is we inject a, uh, a liposuction fluid solution and just in the fat region here. As you can see, it's blowing up and that's what we want. We want it to be full so I know exactly where the fat is. And we're also gonna go across his jawline. Before surgery, I showed you that he has a very loose lid, and that makes the skin very, very loose. And instead of cutting skin from here, which I don't like to do because I don't want to pull down when it scars, is that we go in and we find the lid, and here you can see the leg tendon. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tighten up the lid. That'll tighten the skin backwards, as compared to this loose skin here, which I've not treated yet. And so this is what we're gonna do to tighten his lid skin. The skin here has been removed from the upper lid, and so this is swelling, but this will be able to close just perfectly. I put the fat that was from the middle bags down here, so now he's got a little bit more cheek volume. I took the fat out from here, and we actually tightened the lid. As you can see this compared to the other lid, which is loose, you can see that this lid is smooth. I want to start doing this lid now. All right, so what we do is we contour the entire neckline and jawline by my left hand feeling that I don't damage anything deep or damage the skin. And we go right down to the thyroid cartilage, which is our um, Adam's apple for males. So the last part of our case, we've done the eyes, we've done the neck. Uh, we did a great job with tightening of the lower lid as well. Now we're going to do the chemical peel for skin care. They take off the top layer of skin, and so that underneath you get a new, uh, rejuvenated baby skin that comes in underneath it. And what you start to see is this white frost, and that means that we're going to stop. And that's as deep as we want the chemical to actually penetrate the skin. We're going to continue on and do the entire face, as well as the lower lid to tighten the skin, and we'll be done. So postoperatively, he's gonna go home today, he's gonna eat, he's gonna walk around his house, and he's gonna feel great. I do prescribe some pain medications if there's any discomfort, but usually there's not too much pain. He's gonna be able to see, he's gonna be able to watch TV, he's gonna be able to walk around, eat what he likes. Um, he may feel a little bit of discomfort for the skin, feeling like it's got a little bit of a burn, um, but that's actually taken care of with some Aquaphor ointment, which cools down the skin. So in general, he's gonna heal very well, and by tomorrow morning, he should start feeling more like himself. It's been a few months since the surgery, and uh, I felt like going into it, I was I was very had a very good attitude about it. Going in, I'd done a lot of research, and so I knew what I was getting into. The recovery was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. I think because I had the peel, I was probably more preoccupied with the peel because your your skin peels, and none of it was uncomfortable or none of it hurt. It was just that I was thinking about the skin coming off and peeling off, and so it was a probably a really welcome distraction. Every day I would wake up even more um, excited about you know my, my eyes and my face and just where I was gonna, where I could see the healing. I would recommend Dr. Deer to anybody, honestly. He's, he's changed my life. He set me on a new path, really, a path for wellness. I just feel like I'm kind of 30 again, and that's what I was hoping for. Welcome back. Hey. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm glad you made it back. Oh, it's good to see you. you. Yeah, good to see you. You made it through the journey? I did. Did you get what you wanted? I did. I did get what I wanted. I, you know, I went into it uh, feeling that I'd reached this, you know, I'm at this 50-year-old stage now, and, and 
all things were starting to fall, the wheels were starting to fall off the car a little bit. And, and every day I would look in, into the mirror and, and no matter how much cream I put on my eyes, and I just felt like I was still that, like that 20, 30 year old man looking into the mirror, but my eyes said that I was like 90. Kind of three weeks into the recovery process, I had started to, to notice myself and, and I found myself to start to smile in the mirror again, which was kind of weird. You know, I knew that it was, it was healing and it was going in that direction. Um, and it was, it's been a life changer for me. It really has. I think the best thing that I kind of want to take from this is that you said uh, that you wanted to look natural and we gave you that, which I absolutely love. And, you know, if we look at before and after, as you and I can, you know, over the last couple of months, we tweaking and we could have done brow lifts, you can do this perfect, you can push the limits to do mm -hmm. anything. But if it doesn't fit the rest of the face, it's not natural and people will, it'll stand out. Right. And so to make this match with everything else and make it look improved and youthful and not go for that grand slam to like fix everything and suddenly you have these 20 year old eyes and mm. that's not the way it looks. Yeah. So it kind of does fit in and you did a great job going through that emotional process and that's why we talk about it and that's why I saw you throughout the way. But to hear that at this point, I feel touched and I'm glad that I made you happy and give you what you want. You have a lot. I'm really happy for Seth. He looks great, and more importantly, he feels great, and has made some positive, healthy changes in his life. Thanks for watching this episode of Plastic. Make sure to follow us on social media to see more surgical and non-surgical procedures. Subscribe, and watch this next video.